to Celebrity Chatter, Things That Matter with Eliza, and that's me. I'm interviewing Chauncey Lapardi. You might know him in Sandlot as Squints. How, how's your day going so far, Cha- Chauncey? Oh, my day is great. So I actually did my podcast earlier today, so this will be my, my second uh, interview. I'll be nice. answering the questions this time. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, we have some questions here for you. And my first question is, uh, what was your favorite memory on set of Sandlot? Uh, I think, I think it was really cool because there was, you know, we had nine guys um, in the film and they all had their families on set. And so it was like a big group of like 40 people, probably, I guess, if you have a mom and a dad and brothers and sisters and stuff, let's say there was like 35 of us and we all lived in like the same condominium complex when we were shooting the film together. So it was a lot of fun, just uh, just the, the melting pot of different people and different things, but we were all like one big family for that summer. It was, it was pretty special. I really like that. Is there anyone today that you still keep in touch with that you talk to sometimes? I talk to all of them. Uh, I talked to, yeah, yeah, Marty York earlier today. He was asking me about something and uh, yeah, I talk to all of them pretty wow. frequently. Yeah, we we're we we're all in touch. We have a group chat. So, oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I bet that's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, do you have any funny and or crazy behind the scenes stories? There was so much stuff. I mean, uh, you know, the guys. We uh, I'm trying to get this camera straight here. <laughs> get the angle better. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, there was just a lot of like uh, sibling type rivalry, you know, a lot of little scuffles and 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 things of that nature. But there was always something goofy going on because you just got a bunch of kids and stuff, you know. Uh, what can I think of that uh, people haven't haven't been told already? Um, gosh, there's so much. There was a. Uh, Oh, I know one. So when we were playing with the other team, um, so they have the camera set up at the pitcher's mound and uh, everything is, you know, they're pitching the ball to us and we're all hitting. So that's that shot of us all in a row, just hitting the ball. And then the the shot of uh, Ham as the catcher talking to the other players, you know? Yeah. And uh, so the camera has a little tiny hole for the lens only, right? I mean, it's no bigger than, and the camera was completely protected by like a a barrier, like plastic thing holding it so that the balls wouldn't hit the cameraman or anything else behind there. So when I was up there, I actually, I swung, I hit the pitch and I nailed the camera lens. I mean, and broke it. And these lenses are uh, extremely, extremely expensive. Most studios don't even own them. They only rent them from from big uh, commercial. So it was quite the anomaly because they didn't think it was <laughs> possible that, uh, that uh, we could hit this little just big enough for a baseball and I just hit it square and it, and it broke the wow. lens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not very good luck right there. <laughs> I mean, not for them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to like pay for it or anything or your parents? No, I'm sure they have insurance to cover it, but okay. no, luckily they didn't charge me for it. I would have. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been bad. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was your favorite scene to film, if hitting a lens isn't a favorite? Uh, there was so much good stuff. I mean, a lot of the baseball stuff was obviously really fun. And then uh, the dog chase scene was really cool because there were so many special effects and things going on. You know, all the treehouse stuff yeah. was amazing because we had so many different, like, things we were doing, you know? Really? And then, of course, the infamous pool scene. How could I ever forget my yeah. first kiss, right? <laughs> first kiss. <That's> <laughs> With Marley Shelton, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lindy Peppercorn. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure at the end of the movie, you mar- married her somehow. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I yeah. married Wendy and we had nine kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> we were pretty busy. Yeah. <laughs> Quince uh, followed his dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ever lose your dreams or something like that. <laughs> no, never. You never know. There's always yeah. hope. 
There's always hope. <laughs> do you have any props from the movie? I think I do somewhere. Not much. They were super. They were super weird about it when we got done shooting because normally there's they they don't have anything to do with it, so they kind of like let you take whatever. But for some reason on Sandlot, it's like they knew that it was going to be special because they didn't want us taking anything from the set. So it was all a lot of like. Uh, period stuff we call it meaning that it was like stuff from the 60s when the film was shot so it was all you know more of their stuff that the studio would definitely want to keep under wraps you know yeah, yeah. and aren't your uh, glasses in a museum somewhere yeah so I, I heard that they were at the Louisville Slugger Museum for a while and yeah. then uh, I'm not sure if they're still there or not but uh, I haven't even seen them since we did the film so wow yeah, it's it's the uh, they've been kept under wraps. If I could have anything, I would definitely choose those. Those are, uh, you know, that'd movie be, movie history, right? Yeah, that'd be a definitely super cool thing to keep. I would definitely agree. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Maybe one day you need to go check out the museum to see if they're still there. Yeah, I've been meaning yeah. to get over there. You know, I yeah. think me and the guys we might uh, form a heist and go try to get yeah. them back. Even better, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It might be I'm a movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite thing about acting? Uh, I think that being on set is really cool. There's a lot of uh, very talented and uh, intelligent people um, from all walks of life. And there's so much that goes into making a picture that, you know, you meet so many different departments of professionals that are amazing at their craft. So that's really cool. And then, you know, getting to to really dive in and be somebody else for a short period of time and to be revered for it in a lot of cases or hated, just depending on if it's a, you know, it could be the the bad guy, you know, and uh, and uh, I, th I think it's cool to get to to live someone else's life for a short period of time on film. Right. Ah, it's a good way to describe it. I really like the way you described it, just being someone else. Um, it's like almost you're getting paid to act like another person and have fun. Basically. Yeah, I, it really is. It's, 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 uh, it, it's pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it's even like at home, if I'm making a video just for fun, it's just fun. I just like acting like somebody else. I just think it's just an art that I really yes. like. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? You enjoy it as well, huh? Yeah. I want to be an actor and okay. have an interview show to the side too. Yeah. And it would definitely be really cool to be in a lot of movies and stuff. I, it's my dream. I want to do that one day. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it, I think you're on your way. <laughs> well, thank you're you. Show already, yeah. you know, <laughs> just keep practicing and keep, uh, uh, you know, the beauty of it is, is that now, with technology, you can do a lot of the stuff yourself, you know, so yeah. nobody can really hold you back from, from being on film or, or making any type of show that you want, because, you know, you could sit down in front of a camera and press the button yourself or get help from mom and dad or friends and, yeah. and put together any type of production that pretty much anybody else can. Yeah. I've seen recently, they've been shooting uh, like feature films on a uh, iPhone. Wow. Yeah. I've seen some, like, I guess there's some big show that they shot all on an iPhone. It had some, like, gizmos and things attached to it and filters, but okay. but it was great. You know, they're still yeah. shooting a, a, you know, a real movie on a phone. So it's it's pretty, it's pretty crazy to think when I started, there was, a, we actually shot on film. And then after the film was developed, they watched, they had to splice the film together by hand to to cut and edit and make wow. scenes yeah and then they would roll it yeah. all together and that would be a, a picture you know yeah, but, yeah. Uh, now it's uh getting edited while you shoot and everybody kind of sees what's going on the whole yeah. time it's pretty Crazy. pretty incredible mm -hmm. yeah if you shot an iphone for every single movie you made it'd be a lot cheaper too <laughs> oh yeah, you can just yeah. go. That's the beauty of no film. Film's very oh, expensive yeah. and and a lot to store, but oh, yeah. Now we have uh, infinite takes, and we can always just pick up and shoot when we want, right? Yeah. <laughs> um. 
Is there another actor or actress you want to meet? So many. There's so many uh, people that I haven't got to work with or meet. Um, you know, I as long as the setting's right. But, uh, y you know, I, I like to, you know, there's a million people I look up to um, in the film business. There's so many great actors. And, you know, yeah, of course you want to go hang out with, uh, with all of them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you could make like any movie, what would you make a movie about? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I think that uh, I like comedies, so maybe I would do a, a a really fun comedy. You know? Yeah, that'd be fun. You know, uh, everything's so special effects and different now that maybe I would just do something very simple and lighthearted and and fun. You know? Yeah. I come from the. Perfect. Era of family films, and uh, I feel like they've changed. You know, everything CGI, and and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes all you need is a some guys in a field and a baseball, and you can make magic. You know? <laughs> yeah, that uh, it'd be definitely fun to make a comedy movie. Who would you cast in that movie? Ooh, <laughs> even harder. I mean, I'd like to work with Adam Sandler. He's he's pretty incredible, oh, right? Yeah. One of the best ever. He makes he mm -hmm. makes great movies. Um, sure. There's so many good comedians. Maybe Dave Chappelle. I love him. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, there's just an endless amount of funny guys, you know? Yeah. Uh, Steve Carell is another guy that's really funny. You know, he's kind of, he's kind of like straight in all the movies and, and not a crazy character, but all the weird stuff happens to him. So that's always fun. Too. It's funny uh, you say Dave Chappelle because... <laughs> Uh, before we just got off spring break, which was last Friday, uh, every morning when I got up and walked the dogs and feed feed them and stuff, I would listen to him, uh, his uh, comedy stand ups, and uh, it's just, it always cracks me up. It's so funny. Yeah, he's good. His uh, yeah. his timing is incredible, and uh, you know some of his uh, some of his routines are a little. Uh, out there but he's a uh, he's just dave right he and mm -hmm. he delivers so it's it's a uh, i like listening to his old stuff a lot too because he was really really good when he was young you know mm -hmm. yeah and if i could make a movie i would make an action movie i always, yeah, thought, I always love action movies this is fun yeah uh, fight scenes and stuff i always i always love those like a, yeah, like doing like a martial arts film would be great too. Oh, I never yeah. got to do a like a fighting, big choreographed uh, martial arts movie like Jackie Chan or something like that would be awesome. Some of his old films oh, that yeah. were really active in action, so good. It's, it's super cool to see those. Yeah, I know my dad really loves action movies because there's not a lot of words in like John Wick. There's just more fight, and he yeah. really likes that. I know. Uh, cause it's just action, action, action all the time. Um, yeah, I, I like makes, it too. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the, uh, old comedies, um, like Three Stooges and some of these early, early pictures were, uh, the guys didn't say very much. It was all physical comedy of them, you know, doing goofy stuff and getting hurt and things of that right. nature. So you used to be able to, uh. Well, movies used to be silent. They used to be just people really acting out the the storyline, you know? Yeah. And there was just music that went along to it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I really love that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, if your life was a movie, what parts would you watch over and over again? Oof. So much stuff. So much stuff. Um, I guess special moments with my kids, right? With yeah. the family and things that, uh, you know, the memories that you keep with you forever, you know? And then I'm sure some of the highlights from your career as well, the things that are, are very special, you know? But but yeah. mostly family, they, uh, those are the moments that you want to relive forever. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love that. <laughs> um, 
Do you have a favorite line from any movie or TV show that you were ever in? Hmm. So many good ones. In the show Freaks and Geeks, I played the bully. So there was a lot of, uh, of Twinkie smashing and things of that nature. There were some really good lines in there. Um, I get in a fight with two of the, the guys, two of the geeks, so to speak. Um, and uh, they end up actually, I'm supposed to be the bully, but they end up actually holding their own and they rip my shirt. And uh, I look all... Uh, out of breath and out of sorts. And I look at my shirt and I say, you, you ripped my shirt. You're going to buy me a new shirt. It was a pretty funny line. Yeah. <laughs> just, character just had a bunch of goofy stuff that he would say. He was a, he was a bully, but he was really sensitive. So at the end, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of showed that he just wanted to hang out with the guys and they were, you know. Yeah. One, one of my favorites or one of my mom's favorites is forever. forever. I love yeah <laughs> that's great uh-huh yeah um so many good ones from sandlot too you know uh all of the the stuff with the speech forever the l7 weenie um just it's just one-liners for days yeah <laughs> yeah and the director he wrote a lot of that stuff just while we were out there he would just be he had like a little microphone, like a bullhorn, and he would just scream stuff at us from behind camera, like say this or uh, do that. And and it kind of worked out. It turned out pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow that's, that's interesting. I didn't yeah. think uh, something like that would happen. Just director screaming at you, say this. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. The cool part about Sandlot, which is actually pretty odd because they don't do this a lot, is we shot it in chronological order. So. Oh. We shot the first scene of the film first, and then we ended with the chase stuff, and everything else was pretty close to, to in order during the middle. So it was really <laughs> cool because uh, we got some fireworks. Uh, it was cool because some of the roles kind of blossomed while we were shooting, and then I think that our parts got a little bit bigger than they were in the beginning. But because yeah. we shot it in order, he could he could change things like that, right? Because, you know, it wasn't affecting right. anything that happened before for us to say something else. So it was huh. kind of cool to see that kind of play out. And it's cool yeah. for an actor also because you're not like, where am I at in the script? I got to remember what we did before. It was kind of like being up there and just kind of letting these characters develop in real time. Right. And yeah. It's cool because not a lot of movies are made in chrono chronological order, like you said. It's, yeah. It's it's fun to do it like that, and like you said, you don't have to flip back from page one all the way to page fifty four. It's just more easier that way. Yes, and, it is a lot easier. Yeah, Normally, on set, we have a uh, we have all types of people making sure that everything is perfect because we got to match that this didn't happen and you're holding it in this hand because you're jumping around and going from scene to scene. So right. it is, it's cool to, to be able to not have to worry about those things and kind yeah. of just be in the moment. Right. How yeah. did you, how did you get your role in a, a squints? I was acting already and uh, it was kind of a normal audition process, um, but it was very intense. We did like three or four callbacks and then, and they were casting all over the country for the film. It was a it was a pretty big deal um, yeah. at the time too. And then once they kind of had us locked in that they were going to use certain people, then we went and we practiced baseball. All of the guys every uh, every afternoon after we would do lines and and you know they were mixing and matching kids and putting people in different roles still and stuff like that. And uh, then we would go play baseball for like three hours in the afternoons. And uh, that way they could see if like, you know, if none of us were great, but they needed to know that we could catch or throw or, or they could make us look like we could play ball, so to speak, you know? <laughs> Actually, yeah. my, uh, my grandfather in the film, Squigman Palidorus, that says the forever line, the one that, that chained up the beast, uh, his name is Daniel Zacapa, and he was actually our baseball coach um, before we went uh -oh. to the film. So, wow. yeah. yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. 
So he was the guy behind uh, my my basket catch and and all of the the way that we did our things. Uh, Daniel kind of helped us shape our our playing styles. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, another behind the scenes story. Yeah, uh, like a lot of people don't know that kind of thing. It's just uh-huh. cool. Yeah, um. I'm sure you had a lot of mixed feelings about this. So how are your feelings about kissing an adult? <laughs> uh, I think I was excited and nervous. <laughs> I'm not sure if she was an adult yet. She might've been 17. She might've been 19. I don't really remember, okay. but I guess I didn't really think about it too much. Um, kind of nervous. It's just like a, something that's out of the ordinary for an 11 year old, but yeah. Also exciting because yeah. you're a little boy and uh, and uh, you get to um, you know I think it was more about the other guys thinking it was cool more so than it was you know what I mean yeah you get to be the cool guy or the cool <laughs> guy for that moment and. Uh, it doesn't really have to do with the act itself, but just the thought around everybody saying, oh, wow, he kissed the lifeguard. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. So, Get yeah. to be the cool kid around the set for a little. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I realized in Sandlot, after you guys were getting out of the pool, all your teeth were like, you were, you were messing with your teeth. Was it cold in there? It was freezing. Oh, no. So... <laughs> We shot the film in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, it was really, really hot all summer. Um, But the day that we shot all the pool scene stuff, it had gotten, it was like one of the coldest days of the summer. And on top of it, the thing that was really bad is they, uh, that pool was empty until two days before we shot that. So they had just filled it up with water. And so it was like freezing cold water on a cold day. Oh, no. It wasn't cold, but it, it wasn't like hot out like it had been. So, And uh, the, the water didn't have time to warm up. So all of that shivering and stuff, that's just us. I wasn't nervous. We were just, we were really, really <laughs> yeah. <cold. laughs> it was cold. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That, and those little short. sound very fun doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was pretty tough. Yeah. When you jumped off the diving board um, waiting for Wendy Peppercorn to save you, did you just hold your breath? You didn't have like a air tank or anything. You just did you just No, they just told me to hold my breath and stay down there. I can actually swim really well and like squint. So I would just <laughs> just float and pretend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. And they had guys and they actually had guys with the cameras underwater with scuba tanks and stuff that were actually filming everything. Oh, okay. So it looks more intense from their point of view cuz you're yeah. seeing them under there doing all that stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Now, um, I'm excited to play this game. We have this game called 100 Questions. We have 100 okay. questions. Don't worry. I'm not going to ask you 100 questions. But no if you want to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna, you're going to pick a number, and 1 through 100, and it's going to be – it could be weird, crazy, funny. Um, these are all the questions from fans that they chose – kind of general questions. Uh, so what's your first number? Let's do uh, 44. 44. I'm going to make you look for it. <laughs> Who's the most <laughs> famous person on your contact list? Ooh, famous person on my <laughs> contact list. Wow, that's a big one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I have a lot of different friends that are musicians and things of that nature. So I'm sure there's, there's, there's guys down that road and then some, uh, maybe some baseball players from Sandlot. Um, But to be honest, the most recognizable person I know is Patrick Renna who played ham in the Sandlot. So he's probably the most famous person in my contact list realistically, because that guy can't go nowhere. Everybody knows who he is, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's looks crazy. exactly the same. So I'm going to go with Ham. <laughs> That'd be awesome to interview him, too. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll Maybe, let him know. We'll see if we can get it. Yeah. He's a busy guy, so oh, yeah. who knows? Okay. But I'll, I'll mention it to him. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Maybe one day we can get all the Sandlot crew in one yeah, video. Yeah, get us all together on a video. Yeah. We could probably we could probably work that out. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's crazy though. <laughs> um, what's your next number? Let's do number eleven. Eleven. <clears throat> Did you ever get sent to the principal's office when you're younger? If so, for what? Hmm. Oh my gosh, I did so many times. But I think the funniest story about that without giving too much away is, is that when I was in kindergarten, my mom came to my school. And when she got there, there was a desk outside of the class, literally in the, the hallway next to the oh, locker. So okay. desk, not even in the class, outside. Weird. And so my kindergarten teacher is talking to her and she goes, yeah, Chauncey's been doing really good lately. We're thinking about moving his desk back into the class. <laughs> <laughs> I talked so much that they put my desk outside of the classroom because I wouldn't stop talking. So apparently they used to be able to do things like that. But uh, that's a funny story about yeah. me being a very energetic kid. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely different. I never heard of something like that. I think um, that's happened to some kids at my school, but I think it was for different reasons, but I don't. I don't remember why, but I, I remember seeing in other uh, classes, seeing desks outside the classroom, like, why is it? But maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, they had to separate me so I didn't distract the class. I guess I was trying to teach the class and, and not <laughs> teach or teach. Yeah. <laughs> class clown. Yeah. <laughs> What's your next number? Let's do, let's do number 25. 25. Are you a cat or a dog person? I mean, I don't have a problem with either. I actually, my daughter has a cat and I we have a dog as well. So I guess we have both in the house, but the cat hides in her room and never comes out. But uh, yeah, I don't, cats don't bother me, but I guess I'm more of a dog person. They're a little bit, you know, you can mm -hmm. interact with them a little bit more. Yeah. Were you friends with the, the dog on the set of Sandlot? There was three of them. There was three dogs on Sandlot. Oh, really? They were different sizes. One was just really big and could just sit there and drool. And one was like medium sized and he did all the walking around stuff. And then they had like a a smaller, leaner version of Hercules that was doing all of the running stuff because the big guy was too he was way too big. He would have never been able to face Benny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. I didn't I would have never thought there was three dogs. They all look the same. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, right? Movie yeah. magic. Uh-huh. Uh, I would say I'm definitely a dog person. Uh, yeah. I have my own dog name. Uh, her name is Fifi. Uh, she's like a Border Collie Lab mix. At oh, least that's a good mix. I think. Yeah. She, um, she's, she's a big dog. She's like medium size. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, she was from the Rescue Pound. Um, yeah. She's awesome. I love her. Oh, and right yeah. now I'm dog sitting my grandfather's dog. Oh, uh, really? Small dog. I don't know what type, but uh, it's it's really small. Uh, you keep them on walks and stuff. You said too, huh? Yeah, I gotta do it separate because my big dog will just try to chase um, the little one around. So. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what's your next number? Let's do number four. Number four. Um, where are you going from here, and what do you have planned next? I'm going to go get some coffee after this. Yeah. Because I haven't had my second cup of the day. I tried to get it in before uh, before we did the show, but I didn't, I didn't make it there in time. <laughs> and then next... Uh, I'm, uh, you know, we're working, we're opening a new retail store. So I'm, I'm working on that at the moment. And uh, then I got some Sandlot stuff lined up for, you know, it's getting back into baseball season. So I'll be doing some of that. Okay. And uh, I'm also, I have some glasses that I've made with a friend of mine that makes, uh, he makes like luxury custom sunglasses, 
but we did a collab together on some on some squints glasses. So we're working on that right now. We're getting That's them made cool. in Italy. So they're really well done and pretty cool. And uh, I'm excited. I finally have my own. I finally have my glasses back. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah. I should. I should buy some. <laughs> I'll see yeah. what I can do. I'll get you a pair. I'll let oh. you know. <laughs> wow. Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so much stuff. Thank you. Uh, what's your next number? Let's do number 19. 19. What's your go-to excuse to get out of plans? Well, I got five kids now, or four with one on the way, so I can use the kids as an excuse at any at any moment. So I'll just yeah. blame it on them usually. Ah, I couldn't yeah. do it. The baby, the baby, uh -huh. the baby didn't sleep last night. We're tired, or uh, I had to help my wife. Couldn't make it. <laughs> perfect excuse to get out of anything. Perfect. Yep. There and sometimes you. it's not even an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes like if you I just wanna... can't make it. <laughs> yeah. Right. If if you don't want to go on an interview show, you just say, "Oh, my kids." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes they, sometimes it's them. Sometimes they yeah. really uh, got something going on. Yeah, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> sometimes they don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your your next uh, number? Let's do uh, thirteen. Thirteen. If you could switch bodies with somebody, Freaky Friday style, who would you pick? Hmm. Anybody, huh? Yeah. Maybe like a famous athlete or somebody that you get to, you know, maybe like a, a, like a Michael Jordan character or, yeah. you know, somebody that's at the top of their game in that time period. I guess somebody new, like a, like Giannis or somebody that's just a, a freak of nature that can just jump mm -hmm. out of the gym and shoot the ball and do all that stuff. Yeah. I never could dunk. So I think it would be cool to be able to, to get out there and, and just do a bunch of cool dunks on the basketball. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Just, um, at my school, uh, last Friday before we got off spring break, um, we just got done doing March Madness. Mm -hmm. um, and, we did five on five teams and three on three teams, and both of my teams made it to the playoffs. Oh wow! Five on five, we made it to like fourth place, and then for three on three, we made it to second. Congrats! And it was just it was a lot of fun just uh -huh. playing, and then eventually, uh, at the very end of the day, we would um play against the teachers and. My team did not win. <laughs> no. Uh, only one person uh -huh. from another team made a three-pointer shot, and I was amazed because some of these teachers at that school are really good. They were trying to take it. They weren't taking it easy on you, huh? Yeah. No, they were not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were dunking and everything. It was. Hard. Oh yeah. They were paying <laughs> you back for all the for all the yeah. the misbehaving in class, huh? <laughs> uh, there was. One teacher, he's like a substitute and an aide, and he was definitely the best player over there. Uh, his, his name is Mr. Turner, and um, he's the tennis coach, basketball coach. Okay. So we knew when we were going to get him, we were like, nope, we lost <laughs> already. Wow, I didn't let you win, huh? Nope. <laughs> no taking it easy <laughs> on him. You got to yeah. learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll pick one final number. Okay. And, um, so what's your final number? Let's do number 10. 10. What is your best dad joke? My best dad joke? Mm, <laughs> good one. I'm supposed to know this because I'm a dad. I guess they're all dad jokes at this point, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. What is my best dad joke? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. I can't really <laughs> think of one. I guess all my jokes, they tell me all my jokes are dad jokes, though, because I guess I'm I'm uh, pretty corny in my old age. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> uh, 
now we have I have one final question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know any sign language? Huh. Not really. Yeah. Is there anything no. you would like to learn? Um. Yeah. How yeah. about uh, how to introduce myself? Uh, you would say like, hi, just normal hi, uh, and then my name is C H A U N C E. Why? Yeah, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I can do it now. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first step to communication, right? Is introducing right. yourself yeah. and Perfect. letting somebody know your name. Yeah. Do you want to learn how to say squints? Yeah. Yeah. So you just go like this kind of squints. Squints. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That is. Yeah. Well, That's great. yeah. Uh, thank you so much for this interview, uh, for spending your time doing this with me. And I would like to thank our interpreter, Donnie. Uh, this is his first time doing it, and he did amazing. He did uh, amazing. F thank you for doing, uh, spending your time doing this for the deaf community to enjoy uh, the interview that I did with Chauncey today. Um, and before we go, do you have a message for your fans that you want to give out? Uh, just uh, keep following the dream, right? Yeah, I like it. Well, Anything's thank possible. You. Yeah, both of you, thank you so much. Uh, follow your dreams. <laughs>